Night Tips. All right, so we are trying to set up a VPN in a Docker container in our Synology NAS, and we are being greeted with a very annoying error that says that the VPN couldn't be started because of a dead ton interface that is missing, or something that says that ton tap. And uh, in the previous video, we came up with a manual kind of solution to allow us to bypass that problem and actually get our containers running. So I'm going to show that solution from before in case you didn't know about it. And then we're going to cover two automatic solutions that will fix that problem for us in our Synology NAS so we don't have to do anything and our containers with the VPNs are going to work out of the box. As you can see, I just restarted my NAS. I'm waiting for Docker to start running all the containers that I have already configured. So once that's done, I'll be back and then we'll see the error that we're talking about. All right, so our Docker is running already. And as you can see, I went in my KubeTorrent with VPN container to see the logs. And the logs basically end up saying we're exiting due to a fatal error. Cannot open the ton tab dev, which is dev net ton. There's no such file or directory and it fails. It doesn't connect, so we cannot do anything about that. So the fix for this is actually, well, the first manual fix that we were doing was we would go here into control panel. We would go into network and network interface, and we created a VPN connection for our VPN pro provider by going into create, create VPN profile, and it was open VPN. And uh, we named it the name of our provider. And we put our username here and our password for our VPN provider. Then we looked for the VPN, open VPN configuration file that we got from our provider on our uh, certificate authority certificate. And with that, we created that connection here. And then what we did is that for our container to work, we would come here and we would connect like the, because the problem is every time your NAS restarts, right? Every time you reboot. So after the reboot, we, we would come here, tell it to connect to our VPN provider, wait for it to connect to our VPN provider and get an IP. And after that, then we would just disconnect and that would solve the problem for us. Then we will, when we go back to our container, we would be able to then just restart it. And then when we look at the logs, we would see that it is able to connect. So let's give it a little bit of time and we'll go to the logs. All right, so now as we can see, the VPN is able to go ahead and the container starts without problem. We don't get that message saying that there was an error. So that kind of fixes the problem for us so that we are able to start the VPN inside our container. Let's also mention that we did have to give this container execution with highest privileges in order for the VPN to be able to do its job properly. But it works. So far it works, we're able to connect. So that's the manual solution that we have. The only problem with that is that it's a manual process. We have to do it. You have to pay attention to your NAS. You have to monitor your logs and make sure that your, your uh, container is not running. So it, it is actually annoying having to do that. So there's a way to do this automatically. So we don't have to do that. We don't have to pay attention to the status of the container whenever there's a restart. If for some reason the power goes out, for example, and your uh, NAS is restarted, it'll fix itself and you don't you won't have to worry about that. So I have created a guide in the GitHub repository for the channel so you can go and get it in tech by tips. So github.com slash tech by tips slash reference guides and here's one that's called fix Synology VPN dev ton issue and you'll see this that has all the instructions. It has the two solutions that we're gonna cover 
uh, in today's video, which is using the user interface to set it up or using the command line to set it up. So let's get to that and let's uh, work on the both solutions. The first thing is we're going to be using the graphical user interface of our Synology NAS to set up the fix. So we'll follow these instructions. It says we go to the control panel, we go to task scheduler, and then we need to create a user defined script trigger task. So let's do that. Let's uh, stop here. Control panel, task scheduler, and then we're going to create trigger task user defined script. And then we're going to name this something like uh, dev ton because it's going to create that dev ton interface that we need. We need to run this as root though. So we're going to specify root and we want this to happen every time we boot up and we need to make sure that it is enabled. Then we can go into the task settings and then we're going to define the user defined script. So let's copy this, go into the task settings and in here we're going to paste that script uh, where it says oh, user defined script. And this is a basic shell script. So you can see that from the top here that is going to do the install mod command and it's going to say to our Synology NAS to install the library modules tunnel. So with that, we click OK. We get this warning and uh, we're OK with that. So we just click OK. And now we have our script defined to run at boot as the root user. So we can apply this and we're good. The changes have been applied. So now, whenever we, we restart the NAS, it should automatically create that interface. We no longer need that interface that we created here. So we can go here and actually delete the VPN tunnel that we created here. And then we can restart our NAS to test that it's working. So let's restart. It's going to take a little bit of time for it to shut down, restart and bring Docker back up. So I'll use the magic of YouTube to fast forward and we'll be back when that's done. Okay, our NAS has restarted. Now it's just uh, running up all the containers that we have configured. So I'm going to give it a little bit of time and after that we'll be back to check the logs. Okay, so the container has started and as we can see, it was fast and it was able to load properly like no problems we didn't get any message about that depth ton interface and we didn't have to do anything it ran the script automatically and uh, the container started without any problems so that's the first way to automate this process using only the user interface in our Synology NAS Okay, so we have completed option number two, which is just using the user interface to set up the script. And we've tested that it works. So now if you want to go and do the same thing, but through the, the command line, we're going to we're going to go ahead and do that on the second part of the video. So first here, we need to enable SSH inside the NAS so that we can get inside the NAS uh, with the terminal by going to the control panel, terminal, and enabling SSH, and then applying that. So let us go back into our NAS and do just that here. S terminal as an MP, select that and click apply. Okay. So now we should be able to go into our command prompt and just log in to our NAS. So we will use the SSH command and then we'll put the username of our Synology NAS and the IP of the NAS so or the name of the NAS and then it'll ask us for the password so we will put that in here and we'll log in and as you can see we're inside the NAS now let's go into the reference once again let's keep this here so we can see both things at the same time and now we need to become the root user so we're going to do the sudo su and put our password in here once again and now we are the root user so we can proceed the first thing we want to do is check if the uh, tunnel module exists so we'll use the ls mod and we'll grep for ton and if we get any input like that it means that it is already installed 
it makes sense because I just fixed the problem using the GUI. Uh, but if, it, if nothing is returned from this command, it means that it's not installed, okay? So the next thing is we would need to install the module. And you do that by running the command install mod, ins mod, and then the module that we want to install, which is uh, library modules ton.ko. And that's uh, the command that would be executed every time your NAS is rebooted. In this case, it tells me that it already exists because, like I said, I just fixed that problem. But you would see here that it creates uh, the files. And now we can test if the module is working, which should be our case now. When we try to create those files here, it already exists. It already exists. And we don't need to change permissions because it's already there. But if we put this, then we get the thing that says file descriptor in bad state, which, which means that it is working. Everything is looking good. So that's what we need to see. Um, and then the next thing would be creating the actual script that will be used. So let's copy this to execute it at boot time. So we would put the command uh, vi, which is a text editor. And then we put the path where we want that file to be created. And we want it in the user, local, etc. RCD directory. Why? Because that directory is where you put files that you want to run on boot. And we're going to name that file tonsh. So when we run this command, we get a blank text editor in here. And uh, we can now copy the code of our script from here. And then to put it here, we just select we press I so that we see insert down in the bottom. So now we can actually type. So in here, we can press the right button in our mouse to paste. And then we'll see the contents of our script. So it's the same thing that we put in the user interface. So it's a shell script that runs the install command for that module. So to save this, we press the escape key first. Then we press the colon. Oh. Escape, there we go. Now we're not in insert mode, as you can see. Then you press colon WQ. That means write and quit. And then you press enter. So now, if we do cat, as we're already root, so cat, we'll see the contents of that file that we just created. So this is already set up so that it should run every time we boot the system but let's just make sure that that file is executable so let's go here and do a chmod and then let's give it 0755 permissions so that uh, it is executable by all users so when we run this and then we do an ls to see the permissions of the file we see that the owner has all the rights and the others have execution rights so the owner is root so root can execute it but any other user can also execute it so we just made sure that it should run properly now so now we have the file there and now it's just a matter of exiting from here we can just type exit twice first time is to get out of root and then the second time is to get out of our user and we're out of our nas and now we can just go back into our nas like the instructions say we don't need ssh anymore so we can disable that and save and after that we go back into the guide and we just have to reboot the NAS and validate that it works so for this case let me get rid of the task scheduler task that I created so that we can validate that the script that we put is actually working so now that's done we can X out of here and we can reboot the NAS. So we'll be back when that's done rebooting. All right, our NAS is back up and it's loading our Docker containers. So let's give it a little bit of time and we'll be back looking at those logs as soon as it's done. 
All right, we're back up. We're looking at the logs and it seems like everything as usual happened perfectly. The tunnel interface was created. The container started without any issues and we don't see any errors. So you have two ways now that you can automate the process to fix the dev ton issue with your Synology NAS and you can run VPNs in your Docker containers. So I hope you liked this video. Uh, remember to like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done it. Share the content if you think someone might find it useful. And remember, there are the uh, links in the description below where you can donate if you want to support me to continue making these sort of helpful videos for you. As this channel is not monetized and you should never see a YouTube ad on my videos. So that's going to be it for this one. See you on the next one.